Hey guys, welcome back to The Misadventures of Laura Silver. So it turns out that out of the four endings, I had found endings two, three, and four. So I just need to find ending one, which is the true ending. So we'll get into it. So I believe the um, divergent point to the true end route is from the maid interrogation. I'm actually using a guide on Steam by Mark3D. So, if you want to go look him up, I suggest you do so. I guess I'll try and confuse her as I did before. And then... Yeah, I confuse her a lot. Um... Are you the one who killed Skoda? Fudnik must have given you some tips. Then... Can you describe how the Vodnik looked like? Did he try to attack you? How did you fight back? Did Skoda do the same? That sounds like something Skoda would have done in a life-threatening situation. What are you implying? I can't say that I'm implying anything. Skoda must have tried to act like he was unconscious to make you stop. But you just couldn't let go, could you? You're being very unreasonable. You do know about the Vodnik. I know you do. Your file had plenty of information about him. I'm sort of... it's sort of obvious that he's the culprit, don't you think? Or did you just read too many detective novels? The maid was the culprit after all, or something like that. Um... This morning... You know, this morning... Uh... I went outside to smoke. She seems agitated. If I can keep up the bluff, she might just confess. I never knew you smoked, Miss Silva. It's good for my mental health. She smiles. Anyway, I went outside for a smoke. Um... I guess it doesn't matter. Hopefully. On the balcony. What kind of brand do you smoke? Uh... <laughs> Um... Uh, oh, I don't... <laughs> Let's not go off topic. As you wish, Miss Silva. So, while I was on the balcony, I looked to my left to see if Skoda was also smoking. You know he can never wake up without his morning cigarette. Do you know what I saw, Miss Rivaluva? What did you see? I guess... Yeah, okay. Make her wait. I should make her wait. Miss Silva? Why aren't you saying anything? I think you already know what I saw, Miss Rivaluva. No, I don't. Miss Silva? Maybe we should call the cops here, Rivaluva. Miss Silva, I can... What is it? I can explain, Miss Silver. Oh, go on. This morning, I. 
She fell for it. Yes. Miss Rebeluva, I believe you are making confession. Oh, I, I wasn't. I was simply curious about what you saw this morning. Never mind. I almost got her. <laughs> I don't know about this. Don't give her time to think. I have to be quick. Um. Okay. Be quick. Uh, alright. I saw you in Skoda's balcony, forcing your way in. Oh my, I think you must have been half asleep to think that weak old me could do something like that. And why do you think that? I think you're lying to put the blame on me. I was in my room at that time. What was the thing I saw this morning, then? I have no idea, Miss Silva. I'd try my best to cooperate if I did. She's lying. Keep on bluffing. I already know the whole story. You can stop lying now. If you knew the whole story, why do you insist on asking me these useless questions? I wanted to give you a chance to plead guilty. You know, make up sob story and make us feel sad for you. Save. Uh, it was self-defense. Maybe you could even make up a reason for why you were balcony hopping, huh? Miss Silver, I will have to ask you to stop right now. Almost there. Intimidated, aren't you? You're the, the stupidest detective I have ever met. Don't make me laugh. Ouch. Nobody will believe your stupid little made-up story. Nobody. Um. So that's what you think, Miss Verbaluva. I smiled to scare her off. You think I'm making stuff up? Of course. Zip back and listen to me. I'll tell you how you murdered him. Nice and clear. Uh, alright. This is new. Um, first event, second event, third event, fourth event, fifth event, sixth event. To remove an event, right click. When you are confident with your sorting, click silver here. And then she got in easily into the room into 101 which is besides the room uh, when you're confident with your sorting click silver here yep first of all we saw Skoda yesterday night or to put it in better words this morning at 2 a.m. Cooper wanted to go to the boiler room and close the external pipes. I'm sure you know why he's doing that. I don't want to bother you with unnecessary details. However, while he was closing the valve, he was being followed by you, Miss Rebeluva. You waited until Cooper left, and you came and opened the valves back again. Then, going upstairs, you entered room 101. You already had the keys for it. I believe it must have been easy for you to obtain them, since you're the maid of this place. You opened the door to room 101 successfully. You had an idea in your mind, and that was to enter Skoda's room from his balcony. Quite a good plan, I might say. The room you entered was only two rooms away. You jumped to my balcony, and after that, 103. After reaching Skoda's balcony, you broke the lock of his door. Unfortunately, Skoda is the person to wake up in the slightest sound, so he was awake. He was waiting for you as you entered the room. Skoda lost consciousness. This is why, when you entered, you had to hide in the bathroom. You held the door so he couldn't enter. The doors in the bathroom open outwards, and you slammed the door in his face. After getting a blow into his nose, Skoda lost his consciousness. And then Skoda was dead. After that, he opened the tap of the tub. You stripped him out of his clothes while the tub was getting filled. It would be normal for you to do it, since your main goal is to make us believe that the Vodnik did it while Skoda was in the shower. Unfortunately, you missed the fact that Skoda is too much of a paranoid to shower in a situation like this. After stripping Skoda, you wore his trench coat so that your clothes couldn't get wet while drowning him. You placed him in the tub and pulled his head under water until he died. The boiler room was flooded. Rubaluva. Rubaluva got rid 
of the proof. You took his trench coat off and folded it, placing it on the bed back again. Then you had to find a way to get out of Skoda's room. You wouldn't be able to use the door because you won't be able to lock the door while you're leaving it. So, instead, you got out of the balcony again to return. However, while you were jumping to my balcony, you dropped the pot on my railings. After going back to room 101, the only thing you had to do was to return to the boiler room. It must have been easy for you to get rid of all the proof, since the boiler room is underwater. You've written out quite a story there, haven't you, Miss Silver? Yes. I believe you still have no proof. If you dropped the pot on my railings, someone must have entered the balcony into Skoda's room. The wind must hide, might have dropped it. How is that possible? Even though the weather was cold enough, it wasn't windy enough. The wind is strong enough to... Even though it was possible for the wind to drop it, nothing changes the fact that Skoda's balcony door was broken. Miss Silver, maybe... I don't like that you keep interrupting me, Miss Verbaluva. Your stress is showing. I simply think that you're reading too much into the... This morning, you entered room 101. Aren't you also interrupting me, Miss Silva? After that, you jumped to my room. <laughs> I didn't... Your destination was Skoda's room, was it not? I didn't do such thing. It'd be easy for a maid to get to the room key. What makes you think that I'm the one who committed the murders, Miss Silver? Getting the room key would be easy for me, but why isn't it Willem? Isn't it easy for a worker to obtain the key? Time to bluff, Silver. Save. Um. Willem said that he didn't know where the spare keys are. Really? Because I'm sure he's the one who has the spare keys to Skoda's room. What is it, Miss Silver? You've gone silent. You noticed that when you opened the safe behind Mr. Chalupnik's desk, there's no way Willem actually said it. Because Skoda would kill him if he told you that. What? You open the safe, and first you search for Skoda's spare key. Only then you notice that it was absent. The room next to Skoda was occupied by me. Even if you had the keys to my room, it wouldn't be possible for you to enter it. This is why you entered from room 101. You, you sure have the talent to make stories up, but you'd be surprised if you heard what kind of things Willem tells me about. This can't be one of them. It is. Willem told me that I didn't. Vil I didn't tell anyone about the key except you, Silver. I thought so. Willem, Silver's the one who killed Skoda. She's trying to make you believe that I'm the one who entered the room, but she could have done the same. Her room is closer to Skoda's than mine. It's right. I also might be the one who killed Skoda. The evidence would be the same if I did the same thing. She's right. What? What are you trying to say, Silver? It would be even easier for you, since you wouldn't need to enter room 101. But if you were the one who killed Skoda, you would have to enter it. To enter it, you would need a key, right? Mr. Chalupnik, would it, you mind opening your safe to check if the key to the room 101 is in it or not? It's the proof I've been talking about, Miss Verbaluva. I... Blanca, are you the one who killed him? Rubaluva, answer him. It'd be the same if you opened the safe instead of talking here, Mr. Chalupnik. No need. No need for what? Rubaluva searches for something in the pockets of her skirt for a while and hands me a key. It is written 101 on the tag. So that means... You're right. I admit it. Explain, Rubaluva. I'm the one that killed Ziv and Skoda. It'd be futile to talk further. I can explain it once again, actually. Silver, you look happier than ever. I am. Nothing beats the satisfaction. I am. Nothing beats the satisfaction I get from solving murder mysteries. Silver, Silver, this isn't. This isn't the time or place. So you want an explanation or not? Uh, <laughs> this is so Dangan Rampa. First of all, we saw Skoda last night. We have no doubt that he was alive at that time. Cooper wanted to turn off the valves of the boiler room to protect you against the danger of the Vodnik. 
Then I went to my room, though unlike me, some people weren't in their rooms. When Cooper went to the boiler room to shut down the pipes, he was being followed by you, Miss Rebeluva. You waited for him to leave. After he left, you turned on the valves. As sneaky as a fox. You headed to room 101 with your pre-provided keys. Since you're the maid, I'm sure obtaining them was easy for you. It was near dawn. You entered room 101, which happens to be the second room past Skoda's room, the room next to mine. You took a quick glance at the room and headed towards the balcony. There were two balconies that you needed to pass. You hopped like a sparrow to my balcony. Just like a sparrow. After breaking into Skoda's balcony, you broke the door's lock. Though we all know Skoda is a nervous person, thus he was awake. When you walked in, he got up from his bed. You didn't know what to do. After that, maybe in a panic or with a plan, you walked past him in order to shut yourself in the bathroom. You locked the door so you couldn't get in. You knew the doors on the bathroom open outwards. As soon as Skoda stopped forcing it, you unlocked the door and slammed it in his face. With this unexpected attack, Skoda's nose was broken and he lost consciousness. After that, it was time for setting the stage. You turned to the tub and turned on the tap. Then you stripped Skoda of his clothes. Your goal was to make us believe that he was attacked by the Vodnik. You took his trench coat. You were planning to wear it. However, you missed one thing. Skoda would never take a bath after reading that it was dangerous. It looks like he's coming to in that image. In this image. Like he's starting to wake up and then falls unconscious again. Which is sad. You placed his body inside the tub. You wore his trench coat so that you wouldn't get wet while you were drowning him. Ice cold, baby. Then you drowned him by pushing him under the water. Skoda was absolutely dead at that point. You took his trench coat off and put it on his bed. It would be an immense risk to use his door to leave, so you went back to the balcony. It all went fairly well until this point. But when you jumped to my balcony, you stumbled on the flower pot. You must have been nervous. The screws couldn't handle the pressure and my pot fell down. You rushed back to room 101. Someone might have noticed the pot, but you had more important clues you had to get rid of. You approached to the pipes. After a moment's pause to gather strength, you broke them off furiously. Then the boiler room was absolutely flooded. No, Miss Silva. The last part didn't occur like that. Unfortunately, I'm not an epic hero like you told. I closed the pipes, just like a normal person. With the wrench I'd already taken from the toolbox, I loosened the main water pipe. After creating a sufficient gap, I turned out the valves again. Of course, the wrench would be a clue too, so I threw it inside the boiler room. I left wa while boiler room was getting flooded. When I returned back to the lobby, I saw you. I believe you know the rest. Yeah, Silver, that was kind of a a weird um, mistake to make, considering Rubaluva was completely dry when we saw her in the lobby this morning. Do you admit all of these, Rubaluva? I do. After this, Chalupnik gives up on Rubaluva and reaches for the phone on his desk. What was your cause, Rubaluva? I don't want to talk about it when Willem is here. Were they having an affair? You can't be serious. You can't be serious. I don't want you to get even more effect. You're saying this after killing my cousin? Was she mad because, um, he was kind of an asshole to Willem? Yes. I shrug. Willem, go get Skoda's body out of the tub. What is it? He's obviously angry at me, but he leaves the room. What was your cause, Rubaluva? I was planning to kill Skoda for a long time. I even got the spare key for your room and room 101's because of it. Also, just like you said, I noticed the absence of the spare key for room 103 while I was looking for it. 
So, what was your cause? After reading what Skoda had written about the Vodnik, I thought I should get rid of him. Why? I'm the one who drowned Emil Cladivo. What? Are you the reason he's the Vodnik right now? I am. Skoda was getting close to the truth, so I got rid of him. It'd be even better if I could persuade you two into believing that the Vodnik did it. This is why you filled the tub. That's right, Miss Silver. What would happen if we believed that the Vodnik did it? You would kill him. I read that you would annihilate the harmful supernatural creatures. Looks like she read the entirety of Skoda's journal. Did the Vodnik try to attack you, Miss Rebeluva? No. Then why did you want him eliminated? I'm the one who made him that way, Miss Silver. I didn't want that beast to live any longer. What was your plan? What do you mean? I mean, what was your plan while you were entering Skoda's room? I think you didn't expect to find him awake like he was. I know what kind of person Skoda is. I thought he'd be awake. I brought a piece of cloth soaked in chloroform. Did you use it? No. As circumstances didn't require me to. She's really ruthless. I assume you were lying all this time while I was interrogating you. I was lying about everything, including my claim that the Vodnik attacked me. What about the daughter? Is it true that he killed his daughter? I am the one who spread the rumors, so that his people wouldn't mind his death. Hardly anyone visited his toy shop after that. What's your motive, girl? But are those rumors true? No. Anastasia died from an illness. Phew. What is it? Uh, everything makes sense now, except that you look calmer than you should. She giggles. Are you referring to the fact that I killed a man this morning? More or less. After doing this twice, I can say it has got way easier to deal with the emotional baggage murder brings. This woman isn't normal. Did you see him after he became a Vodnik? No. How did you know that he became one? I read Skoda's files. It clearly wrote Emil Kladivo, the Vodnik. How did you drown the Vodnik? I believe it'll be a long story to tell. We have the time. This was around two years ago, when I was working at Mr. Cladivo's workshop. After his daughter Anna's death, he wouldn't leave his room. I kept the shop clean, tried my best to communicate with him. I could hear him talking to himself, though. The death of his daughter had upset me as well. The only thing I wanted was to share his pain and try to console him, but... He didn't let me. He didn't even answer me, not even once. When I knocked, he went silent. It was as if he wanted me to leave, so he could keep talking to himself. After a few days, I assumed he went insane. One night, I knocked on his door several times, waiting for him to answer. If he didn't, I had also considered breaking the door. Then he opened the door. He showed his face through the crack. I could see his sunken face. What is it, Miss Brovalova? Mr. Kladiva, I think you know what's wrong. Are you aware that you haven't left that room for a week? A week? He furrowed his brow, sighing. I didn't notice. Thank you. He left the room, pulling the door shut behind him. I don't want to meddle in your affairs, but who are you talking to? Miss Rebeluva, well, it wouldn't be wise of me to share this with you. Why wouldn't it? Right. You've been working as my maid for years. Yes, I have. Can I trust that you won't say a word of this to any strangers? Surely. Well, I thought I was going insane at first. Anastasia, she... she spoke to me. Mr. Cladivo. We're both mourning her death. However, it's not healthy for you to lock yourself in like that. You're implying that I've gone crazy, Miss Frobaluva. I really saw her. Maybe we should take a stroll outside, or if you keep yourself busy with your work, you'll feel a lot better. She must have become a ghost, or else... How could she have been able to talk to me? You we went to her funeral days ago. She was buried properly. She can't return as a ghost. 
Mr. Cladiva, are you all right? Mr. Cladiva? You may be right, Verbaluva. Not leaving your room may have caused you to see some things. You should go out and get some fresh air. That might work. It's a relief to see you out of your room, Mr. Cladiva. Do you want to come along? Knowing you, I think you'd want to start working on your dolls and toys when you come back. Indeed so. It's better if I clean your tools. I'll prepare them for your arrival. Thank you for everything. Don't even mention it, please. It's my job. I handed him his coat. I waited for him to leave. He looked like he was in a rush. It didn't take long for him to get out of my sight. After that, I entered his room. My plan was to see what he was inside. But he had been too careless. He didn't lock the door behind him. I opened the door and... I saw his daughter's body. She was placed on a chair looking cold and lifeless. He had dressed her with her favorite clothes, her hair tied in a meticulous way. I couldn't handle the sight of this enclosed door. Horrible. I was already thinking that I should run away from the house. Then I thought that I had to bury the poor child first, to bring an end to her suffering. I tried to stop the shaking of my hands. Then when I tried to open the door, the door wouldn't budge. I was so unbelievably afraid of the body inside the house that I thought I should find Mr. Cladivo first. I got out, ran as fast as I could. I found Mr. Cladivo at the bridge. Miss Rebeluva, what brings you here? I know everything. You left her door open. Her door, you say? So you've seen her. What do you think you're doing, Mr. Cladivo? Don't you think you're being disrespectful to the dead? He turned his gaze to the river. I don't think I am able to comprehend the reality of the situation. Reality of the situation? If you were able to comprehend it, you wouldn't go to visit her empty grave in the first place. Is it empty? Who stole her body? Mr. Cladivo, you... You're insane. He grabbed my shoulders. What happened to her, Miss Rebeluva? After that, I pushed him. I didn't think that he would lose his balance. Did he fall off the bridge? It happened suddenly, you see. He had lost a lot of weight while he locked himself in the room. I assume he grew weak because of that. Then, did he drown? I believe so. It was more of an accident, really. It was a really different circumstance from you cold-bloodedly murdering... Um... Our... Co-worker. He returned to the toy shop afterwards. I returned to the toy shop afterwards, and I broke the door to Anastasia's room. There was nothing inside. I moved to the city after this. Miss Robaluva, I have another question. Yes. I assume the body should have been at least one week old when you saw it. Yes. It should have started rotting at that point, Miss Robaluva. Are you sure you didn't smell something bad? I was in the situation that landed itself to thinking properly. I didn't notice anything about the smell, Miss Silver. You said he was a toy maker, right? Yes. Are you sure the body you saw wasn't a doll? Some dolls are very lifelike. Are you 100% sure? She nods. I'm sure of it. That body was a spitting image of the late Anastasia. And then it actually does turn out to be a doll. So your 100% is actually 100% wrong. It was a doll. Hmm. Is this thing related to the wish that he asked from the wish grantor? In any case, I should go to the Vodnik's house. I need to get an answer to this question. To do that, I need to find Cooper fa first. Though he's late, I should go check on him. I believe you won't be showing any hostile behavior against villain Mr. Chupnik, Miss Blanca. Surely. I have no intention to complicate your work. You've already complicated it. I nod. It's hard to think she just killed a man this morning. The police will take care of Revoluva after this point. I should leave this place as soon as possible. What are you going to do now, Miss Silver? Since I've solved the murder of Ziven Skoda, I don't have much work left except finding the Vodnik. I see. Let me ask one thing. Did you lie about your inability to read maps? Yuri knows where the Vodnik lives, but I thought I should ask you first. Reading maps isn't my strong suit. Or are you just maybe trying to complicate my work? She rolled her eyes. I think I got my answer. Well then, I'll go check up on Cooper. He's late. Is it logical to leave a killer here on her own? I can run away any second. I don't think you can, but you said you wouldn't show any hostile behavior against Willem or Mr. Shlupnik. And you believe that? I did, but can you hold your hands out? 
Bribaluva outstretches her arms. I cuff them. Now you can't run away. Thank you, Miss Silver. No problem. I leave the killer on the ground floor and go upstairs to find... Wait, do I hear Cooper yelling? Miss Silva, while I was gone, what did you discuss in the meeting with the hotel staff? We figured out that the maid was the killer. Mr. Chalupnik explained to me the situation. Killer? The killer of whom? You need to tell us how you entered the hotel, Pavla. Hotel Pavla, if you want to know the answer, Yuri. Uh, help dull, Silver. Do you know anything else? I don't. Both Mr. Chalupnik and Mr. Villain were reluctant to inform me further. After we cornered her, Verbaluva admitted that she was the murderer. Looks like she has done the job exactly like we talked. We have succeeded, then. You don't sound like you believe it, though. It sounded like a very unlikely scenario, that's all. I see. Did you learn anything else? She also drowned Mr. Cladivo. After that, the man became a Vodnik. Wow, a double murder. Maybe I should have hired her as my executioner. That's not... Well, I guess a, an executioner can be someone who executes people. I, I guess in my head I was just thinking of a lawyer. I believe she would show peak performance. Young Mr. Yuri, how do you know words like that? I will deny your existence until you stop calling me Lord Von Geldern, copper. Is that so? Then, Miss Silver. Yes, Cooper. What about the rumors of him killing his daughter? Fake. That's a relief. It looks like we have no reason to be afraid of the Vodnik. Also, if you're interested in the well-being of the hotel folk, I have to say that Willem isn't wasn't doing great. Chalupnik was the same as ever, though. Mr. Willem and Miss Rubaluva seemed close. I would be devastated if I were in the same state, too, Miss Silver. Who are those Willem and Rubaluva people you're speaking of? This kid really likes to talk, like hear himself speak, huh? The cook and the maid of the hotel. Servants, then. Miss Silver, this is the place Yuri pointed to on the map. I look around. After we pass those trees, we'll see his toy shop. There's a faint melody of violin emanating from inside the house. Now we can go back. He returns towards Cooper's car. I don't let go of his hand. I told you I would pay for whatever you took. Why do you want to go back? Is there something else you forgot to tell me? I don't want to enter. Tell me why. The girl, Vodnik's daughter. He pauses. She's not normal. It's best if we leave them alone. Mr. V Miss Rubaluva told me that the Vodnik's daughter was deceased. Is he talking about her ghost? Did you see his daughter? She died around two years ago. Yuri, there is no way you were able to see her. Y you said in the car that ghosts existed, didn't you? I did, but you know it's not easy to see them. Why don't you just believe me, Silva? Don't interrupt me, Yuri. Besides, I- I don't want you to see her! Why is he worried for me? What's up with this ghost? Look, I'll be cautious if I see her, alright? I've dealt with ghosts before. I'm used to them. He stares down. Looks like he really doesn't want us to go in. I'll be guarding you at all costs, Yuri. I don't need you guarding me. He huffs. You seem scared, though. I'm the King of Hanover, Silver. I don't get scared. This actually jumped over the option of getting rid of Yuri. So, I believe we're on the right path now. Psh! I felt the fear. I felt the fear in your voice, therefore I decided to help you. I'm failing to understand how you'll help me, but I'll gladly take the offer. My offer is, you need to quit your job, Silver. I can't do that. You can. You just choose not to. You can quit your job and live in a farm raising your own chicken. Tempting. Maybe I'll do that. Really? Yay! After my work is done, after I check everyone on the list. You're boring, Silver. I believe this is your second time saying that to me. I'll keep repeating that until you stop being boring. I don't mind being called like that. Hmm. As Yuri stays silent, I take the silver bullets out of my gun. What are you doing? I'm reloading my gun with the holy water bullets. What? 
The ones I talked about in the hotel alley. They're for ghosts, remember? What? Are you going to shoot them? I don't plan on doing that, unless they show hostile behavior, of course. It's more of a precaution. I'll need to get rid of the Vodnik if he's, harmful, if he's a harmful beast. Right now, I have no reason to believe that he is, so I won't act on it without proof. I don't want to do that, though. They aren't bad people, Silva. Really? Why didn't you want me to see the girl, then? We just had an argument. With the girl? I won, of course. You don't look like you did. I close the cylinder after filling the gun and point it to the grass. It feels nice to have it in my hands. What I'm picking up from this is that Laura is extremely cautious and par- well, I already knew she was paranoid, but this is going completely differently from the way it did in the previous iteration when she had assumed that the Vodnik was hostile, even though when we actually met him, he seemed perfectly calm and, uh, like, reasonable. He just wanted to know why she was there, but Laura didn't even give him a chance. And it's that expression of panic that she showed when she, you know, dumped tea all over herself. It's just part of her personality. She's not good in stressful situations, in my opinion. Silva? Hmm? One of the bullets was a bit ugly. What do you mean? The first one you inserted. I close the cinder cylinder without any problem. Can I take a look? I sigh and open the sil- What? What's wrong? I can't open it. Just like I thought. It's stuck. I take my dagger out and fiddle with the cylinder. The cylinder pops out, along with the bullets. Yuri points out one of them. This is the ugly one. You have a good eye. Of course. I throw the bullet with the dents into the river nearby. You're being reckless, Silva. What were you going to do if it hit me? Holy water bullets can't hurt you, Uri. Huh? I pick up the bullets, refill the empty slot, and tuck the cylinder back in its place. Silva, careful! I hear the door of the Vodnik's toy shop opening. Get behind me, Yuri. Yuri, for the first time, listens to me without objecting. I slide my gun back into its holster. A girl around Yuri's height gets out of the door. Ribaluva must have lied about the girl. She doesn't look like a ghost at all. Who are you? I'm Laura Silver. You must be Anastasia? Yes. What do you want? I have something to discuss with your father. My father has nothing to discuss with you, though. Also, he just got out. He just got out. I haven't seen anyone leaving from the front door. That means their house must have another entrance. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward again. Is this the wild beast? Sea beast we were making a fuss about? He's undoubtedly the Vodnik, the water spirit who drowns people and stores their souls in... jars? I can't recall, though that can stay unknown for now. Father, what are you waiting for? Anastasia, my dear. We talked about this, didn't we? We did. We did. Huh? About what? No drowning. There are already too many ghosts around. It's troublesome. Phew. They're not going to drown me. Well, I'll get to that, but didn't I tell you that you shouldn't possess anybody other than your own? You did. That'll make it hard for you to fully use the doll as your own. I'm sorry. She murmurs a vague apology. This, glear this girl clearly wants to see blood. Well... It seems like no one is going to kill us here. The girl yells again. You! Yes. She throws me the arm, Yuri's arm. I catch it. Silva, I... I pull Pavla's glove off his hand. I'm faced with the hand of a ball-jointed doll. I take a look at Yuri. He looks in despair. I'm sorry, Silva. What for? I'm... I'm a ghost. As far as I can see, you're a living doll. He's using a doll I made, miss. It's the Vodnik who is speaking. Also, excuse me and my daughter, is there anything I can help you with? You. You are a Vodnik, correct? Surprising. This is the first time I see a knowledgeable human. But you didn't drown people. But you don't drown people. No, no, no. Like I said, there are already so many ghosts. Why would I try to add a new one to their ridiculous number? 
Besides, I have my precious daughter with me. I don't need anyone else. That'd be me. The girl is now smiling at me. I don't trust you, kid. I shouldn't trust this man either, but he doesn't look dangerous. It's truly tragic to greet you this way. Maybe you should apologize to the Mrs. Well, Anastasia. Her head is bent. She is indeed looking sorry. All right. I'm very sorry, lady. I reach out my hand to Yuri. He takes my hand and gets up. May I request an explanation about the dolls, if possible? Sure. Anna takes off her glove, too. Shows me her hand. See this? Me and Yuri are both ghosts, and Father made dolls for us to possess. Huh. Yuri. Is this body the toy you stole? He nods while gripping my hand harder. I'm sorry, Silver. For what? I lied to you. I crouch down. It's fine. Everyone would do the same after learning that I'm a paranormal detective. He presses his head on my shoulder. He doesn't want me to see his face. Yuri. He murmurs something. I don't think the Vodnik or his daughter are bad people. Is it alright for me to call them people? I hope I'm not offending anyone. I don't think they will try to hurt you from now on, so... They won't... They won't let me take this body. I pat his head. Didn't you steal it? If you'd bought it, I believe they would let you. I hear footsteps coming from behind. I believe they are the Vodniks. He crouches down next to me and Yuri. Do you wish to purchase the stole? He raises Yuri's poncho to look at his joint socket. I'm afraid I can't let you have it for free. It now needs fixing as well. Your daughter is the one responsible for that, old man. He laughs. I believe she is. Would you give me the arm, miss? I give him the arm. He's trying to put it in place. That's a relief. There's no crack at all. Phew. How do I pay for it? Bring me some materials for my work or some records would be enough. I don't want any money. People are trying to attack father if he shows himself in town. Mm. And that's the reason I don't want... I don't want any money. That's harsh. The Vodnik stands up. I see Yuri staring at his hands. It looks like he's able to use them, though he still looks sad. Yuri, what's wrong? I thought you would make me disappear, Silva. I have no reason to do that. Aren't you an assassin? I'm a detective, not an assassin. You're not on my list anyway. What would be my reason to exercise you? I stole Pavla's gloves. That's no big deal. <laughs> really? Sure, as long as you don't hurt anyone, you can steal stuff. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't, don't. That's not a good message to give to a kid. I won't cause any harm, I promise. Not very convincing, but I choose to believe it. Apologies for interrupting, but what is the list you've mentioned? I stand up, facing Vodnik. I'm here because I have you on that list, Mr. Kledivo. I believe you. I know where this is coming from. Would you like to join me for a card game while we talk about it? I am bad at card games. Still, my invitation stands. He smiles while leading me and Yuri into a shop. Now everything has started to look like a dressmaker's workshop instead of a toy shop. Fancy dresses and accessories decorate the walls, and I can see a sewing machine on one of the desks. I see another door at the back, I assume going to the room where the toys are made. Anna and Yuri start fighting over a dress. Are they fighting over which fabric is better than the other? I don't understand. They make me feel like I'm in a nursery. I thought Vodniks were supposed to keep the souls of the people they had drowned in jars. Not everyone fits into stereotypes. He puffs a cloud of smoke. May I ask your name? Laura Silver. Nice to meet you, Miss Silva. You too, Mr. Cladivo. Emil's fine. I cut my ties with my family name long ago. He raises his pipe to his mouth. Are you some sort of debt collector? Yeah. That's exactly what she is. A assassin slash debt collector slash mob uh I don't know the word for it, but debt collector is pretty good. You can say that. Then I believe we have much to talk about. I take my list out and put it on the table. Remember this hand I remember this handwriting. 
He's undoubtedly the Vodnik I'm looking for. It's very hard to read. What makes me curious is I made my wish before I became a Vodnik. How did he know that I am one now? That's odd. Anyway, it looks like he f he's finally on the offensive after all these years to collect unpaid debts. He must have given my name as one of the bad guys, huh? It's true that I haven't paid my debt yet, though. What did he want from you? You'd usually expect him to talk about taking your firstborn child after granting one of your wishes. That is how the story goes. He wanted me to bring him a ghost child, if I ever see one. Anna? No, not her. He mentioned that he was looking for a ghost boy who was approximately ten years old. That sounds creepy. Maybe he was looking for Yuri. I was thinking of asking him about it. However, I didn't want to interrupt your talk. You're a kind man, Mr. Emil. He smiles as I turn my back to call Yuri. Yuri, won't you come here a bit? Yuri seems like he's irritated but since I disrupted his sweet argument with Anastasia. What is it, Silva? Do you know anything about the wish granter? Hmm? Only thing I know is that their name sounds pretty stupid. I believe it's not his real name. If he chose that nickname for himself, that's somehow even more miserable. The Vodnik chuckles. It seems like the man is looking for a ghost boy around the age of ten. You'd be surprised if he knew the number of ghosts who fit the description. Did he give any other clue? Please wait. I'll take out the document he gave me. Emil leaves his pipe on the ashtray before getting up. He starts searching the cabinet. Why are you sulking? I want to go back to playing with Anastasia. It looks like I'll talk more with Mr. Emil. I think you'll have time to play with her. Hmm. He still looks bothered. I guess children do get bored easily. The Vodnik sits back down while putting the document over the table. Here. There's a drawing apparently made by some child. What is this? This is the document I received. He said that he drew the kid he wanted to meet with. It's terrible. I'm sorry, Wish Granter, you're no artist. Are you sure Anna didn't draw this? <laughs> this. My drawer could do a better job at it. Yeah, I, I believe it. Uh. <laughs> what do you think of this, Yuri? This looks bad and creepy, Silva. Blame that on the artist. Is this you? No? Fine. Did this Wish Man give any other clue? He only said that the kid he's looking for was his friend. I don't have a friend like that. He looks at me. Can I go now, Silva? I nod, and he starts walking towards Anastasia cheerfully. Looks like I won't be paying my debt to him this uh, time either. I hope this won't cause any problems. Don't worry about it. I'll do explaining when I give him my report. When I finish going through the list, I hope that I'll find the boy he spoke of too. Thank you, Miss Silva. No need to thank be thankful. This is my job. May I ask you how you know the wish granter? If it's not a sensitive subject, of course. I also wanted him to grant me a wish, though he didn't want a ghost child from me in return. He only gave me this list and told me to take care of the debtors. Working as a debt collector is your payment, then. Exactly. I have a friend who employed me in this detective bureau to help me find the debtors all around the world. He puffs out a cloud of smoke. The smells of nepotism. That's not entirely wrong. His judgmental look is replaced by a smile. Though, you being here proves that you're doing your job properly. Besides, it's obvious that you're accustomed to it, since... It's my first time seeing a human getting attached to a ghost. Attached? I thought you wanted to purchase the door, so I assumed you were willing to take care of him. I still want to purchase it, but that doesn't mean I am his caretaker. I met him this morning. I'd say you're doing a favor for a ghost isn't something normal humans would do. Hmm. What are you going to do with Yuri once you leave the Pilsen? Never thought about it, though if he wants to come with us, he's free to do that. I can use a ghost's skills in my investigations. After all, he'd be able to get inside places neither Cooper nor I can. Looks like you're already seeing him as a teammate. You could say that. And here I was ranting about several humans, especially about their behavior toward the supernaturals. 
Seriously, it became a habit while working. I smile. I believe I know one of those humans. Mr. Miss Rebeluva told me everything. You've done splendid research, young lady. How is she doing? I got her arrested today. <laughs> he nods. Spectacular job. <laughs> I like a meal. Did she mention that I've written her letter? No, not at all. What was it about? You'd think that she would feel remorse for what she has done. She didn't intend to kill me, so I thought she might have been regretful for it. I wanted to ease her conscience and maybe win an old friend back. Who knows? Besides, I'm sure she saw me as some witch doctor who was trying to revive his daughter. It's the best if I don't tell him about the Skoda incident. He sounds too hopeful for Rebeluva, especially since she um, spread a rumor that he murdered his own daughter, which is effed up. Mr. Emil, what did you wish for from the Grish Granter? I would rather keep it to myself if you don't need to specify it in your report. Fair enough. I simply asked because I was curious. Good. Though maybe you would be interested in telling me what you wish for, young miss. I... I can't let anyone know about it. I respect your privacy, so I believe we can come to an agreement on telling each other the wishes we've made. I nod. His wish must be about a sensitive subject, similar to mine. Though my story ends with my daughter and me together, I don't ask for anything more. The only problem here is that I have you on my list. Are you sure that I can take Yuri? I'm a father, Miss Silva. I have to think of what's the best for children, and I suppose this troublesome kid wants to stay beside you. Thank you for the parenting advice. Any time. Ghosts must like to possess things they can fully control, huh? Indeed so. Some of them request lifelike pieces so they can try to blend in with humans again. Some of them just want to be in control of a decent body. You can guess that I have unique customers. The dolls you make look exquisite. I appreciate the sentiment. My job is to make bodies for ghosts who aren't content with possessing old street lamps or cheap teapots. It's hard to please them. I can't say that I'm specifically trying to please them, though. I just want to do a good job. Are there ghosts who are able to dislike these? People who aren't content with themselves tend to find the ugly in everything. And those people are the ones who always become ghosts in the end. I can't wait for the day I get haunted by Skoda. <laughs> it's, poss it's impossible for that man to have a peaceful afterlife. I'm actually wondering um, if the reason Anastasia couldn't move on is because of his wish, which is also effed up, actually. Like, she should get the chance to move on, yeah? I heard that you've killed a few fishermen. Ah, that subject. You've learned what happened between me and Robaluva. I'm not telling you that part. After she pushed me off the bridge, I opened my eyes on a fishing boat. There were two fishermen on it. Naturally, they thought a dead body opened his eyes. Their fear was immense. One of the fishermen jumped out of the boat, and the current was stronger than usual. I was too busy trying to understand what happened and how I was even alive, and then I noticed the other fisherman pointing a harpoon at me. I also jumped out of the boat to escape. The fisherman on the boat started to engine and went against the current. I searched for the other fisherman, but I couldn't find him anywhere. This is how I know the story of the fisherman, but... I wonder what the fisherman on the boat told you. It's disappointing to know that people are afraid of me. However, I understand how a green sea beast could be threatening. I can't show you proof to make you believe in my story, though. It's up to you. Alright. This man looks like he has been through a lot, but he's now at peace with things. It's admirable. I almost hunted this man down for nothing. I don't want to imagine doing that to another being. I look around to see Yuri. He's trying on hats and admiring himself in the mirror. Meanwhile, Anastasia is watching him and saying stuff like how that hat would suit her better. The bickering never ends. Mr. Emil. Yes. We travel a lot as a group. I currently don't have the materials you demanded in exchange for Yuri's body. I can bring them to you after I take a trip to England. Our employer collects a lot of records, so I think I can take some from here. Would that be a problem? You're obviously someone who pays her debts, Miss Silva. 
time isn't that important for us anymore. I can wait. Thank you. Also, a few records would do just fine. We've been listening to the same music for months now. Try not to come around my nap time and I'll make a discount for you. Now that you mention it, did we arrive while you were sleeping? Unfortunately so. Anna had to wake me up after she heard about all this fuss. Oh, and if Yuri hadn't freaked out and stolen the doll, he would have tried to gather materials too. I believe he isn't very good at saying calm and communicating. Even though he acts like he can do anything. Throwing stones at glass houses, Laura. When you return to pay your debts, do bring Yuri with you. The kids look like they're having fun. I look back to see Anastasia throwing something at Yuri. What is that? Is is it a shoe? After getting a blow to his head, he falls. Quickly recovering and running to me, he yells, Silva, we are leaving! I see Anastasia running after Yuri. Are you leaving? Because I told you that hat doesn't look good on you. Coward. You're such a coward. Joke's on you. You are far too inferior to understand the reason why I am leaving Anna. Emil, Mr. Vodnik, stands up. He's even calling her Anna. It looks like her peaceful talk has come to an end. Sorry for the inconvenience we've caused. No problem. Yuri grabs my hand with both hands. I stand up, start walking to the door, and he follows me. We are leaving, right, Silva? Yes. Did you pay for my body? I don't want to be chased by this beast of a girl again. I look back to see Anna sticking out her tongue. We had a deal with Mr. Vodnik. A deal? It's none of your business. Hmm. I think this whole problem wasn't your business either. I stop and look at his face. Do you want me to leave you on your own? I would be alright on my own too. I hear Anastasia bickering with the Vodnik. She probably doesn't think Yuri could have managed staying out of trouble. Neither do I. Sure. Goodbye, Miss Silva. Yuri, take care. Yuri looks back to Vodnik and Anna and sticks out his tongue at her, only to get the same. After that, Anna looks at me and smiles. I wish you good luck, Silva. Not expecting Anastasia to give me such a kind parting words, I smile. They are both nice people. What do you think, Yuri? Anna wasn't so bad, actually. Great. I want to visit here again. Silva, I already know which clothes I want. They may be a bit too expensive, Yuri. You're the one who is poor. I believe I'm not poor, but I guess everyone would be poor compared to a king. Hey, Yuri, let's talk here a bit before we go near Cooper. Sure. What do you want to talk about? What kind of life were you leading while you were alive? That's too blunt a question, Silva. I'm curious. I used to be a king, the king of Hanover. When? Between 1797 and 1798. You're old. Older than you, for sure. How did you die, then? He looks like he doesn't want to talk about it. A friend betrayed me. I'm actually really curious about this. What kind of friend? An advisor? Or... I doubted someone his own age, because... First of all, how... Would a child, a ten-year-old, orchestrate the assassination of a king, of a country, or a kingdom, whatever? So it was probably someone around Laura's age, honestly, an adult who was a friend, and they had him killed for power. He killed me. The whole kingdom was talking about how he plotted such a heinous, treacherous snake. I see. How old were you when you died? I never knew the exact date of my birth, but. People assumed I was around ten years old. Weren't you royalty? I thought the births of royal people recorded. Whatever. Do you have anything good to ask? Did you not like answering these? Just go back, Silva. I take that as a no. Miss Silva, Yuri, you're all right. Yuri looks at me, his face yelling that he doesn't want Cooper here again. Thank you, Cooper. Why, not at all, Miss Silva. It's my job. Thanks for defending our line of supply perfectly, Cooper. Any time, but how did it go? He holds the passenger seat open for me. We slayed a few beasts, unlike you. Cooper looks offended for a second. I take my seat and close the door, seeing Yuri sitting in his seat. So, uh, shush, Yuri. Cooper takes the driver's seat. Miss Silva, is he coming with us? Yes, I am coming with you. Does this bother you? He looks uncomfortable. 
looks into my eyes. He lowers his voice. Miss Silva, what about his family? Won't people look for him? What business did he have with the man he was running away from? Hey, Cooper, if you were that curious, you should have come into the shop. Excuse you. Here he pushes the driver's seat with his feet, not letting Cooper get comfortable. Fasten your seatbelt, Yuri. Aye, aye. Seeing Yuri lead back and reach for the belt, Cooper sends me an appreciative smile. He looks like he's good with kids until they create problems. He's not... He's not very reliable. Where should I drive to, Miss Silva? I take out my list. Uh, looks like we have more business here in Czechoslovakia. We're heading to the capital, Prague. Wait! What? I took some gloves from the Vodnik shop. What have you done? He giggles. They look like the ones Pavla owns, but these have fishes embroidered inside, so I think they are better. Did you steal again, Yuri? No, Anna gave them to me. That sounds like a lie. So let's go back to the hotel. I have to give her her gloves back to, co to Pavla. Cooper turns left. Hotel Pavla it is, then. I'm not really sure if we should go there again. Won't Mr. Chalupnik kill us? I'm still alive, Miss Silva. Besides, it was just children playing around. It's not a problem. No. What kind of person was the Vodnik? Hmm. A good one, I believe. Did you purchase the toy Yuri wanted, Miss Silva? We kind of borrowed it for the time being. I have to pay him the actual price someday. We can visit Hotel Pavla when we do, too. They may be busy in spring or summer, though. Right. Copla? Yes. Go faster! I can't do that, Mr. Yuri. Mm. It seems the policeman... It seems the police... It seems the policeman left. I don't want to go in. Oh, why, Miss Silva? They were all kind people. I see Pavla coming out of the hotel. When she sees us, she turns back inside. See, Cooper? Even the little girl hates us. I don't believe that's the case, Miss Silva. I know. The case was about Vodnik. I think Kappa meant you shouldn't take Pavla seriously, Silva. No sense of humor. Uh, I see Willem coming outside. Really? Will he return like Pavla did too? I don't think so. Look, he's coming. He has a knife in his hand again. <laughs> Looks like both Skodas are careless. Miss Silva? What? I see Willem approach. He looks a lot more positive than I expected. You were only gone for like an hour. Silver! Willem? Thank you for everything. I didn't expect this. Don't mention it. Are you aware that you have your knife, though? He laughs. I didn't notice. Wait for a bit. Well, we know that you're not going to harm us now. That can stay. Really? I wouldn't expect that from you, Silver. I shrug. Are you okay? I'm fine. Really? Well, of course, I'm not that fine. Don't worry. I'm sure Zivin will- I know he would return as a ghost because of me. He would return as a ghost because he was such a prick. Yes, exactly. He may be here watching us too. Maybe. Willem gives me a paper bag. I made these for you. You two didn't need a thing, so I was getting worried. Thank you, Mr. Willem. You're welcome. I look inside the bag. What are these? Those are called strudels. I usually make them with apples, but... Silver, you seem like the type to hate sweet food, so I changed the recipe a little bit. How did you know? Same way you knew Blanca was the culprit. This is my job. That makes no sense. It actually makes perfect sense. He gives a paper bag to Yuri, too. Though, is Yuri able to eat? I don't eat commoner food. This is a pastry that German knights pack before exploring their new lands, though. I see Yuri's eyes getting brighter. I have a feeling that he just lied, but fine. Really? I don't make commoner food, Lord von Migeldron. That's so cool. You should have been my cook. It looks like everyone in Hotel Pavla is accustomed to spoiling children. <laughs> Speaking of children, we see Pavla and Mr. Chlupnik getting out of the hotel. Leaving without a goodbye? Mr. Chlupnik, we were just about to visit you. Where will you go now? I believe we're going to Prague. Oh. I believe we're going to Prague. The capital. That's neat. Um, Mr. Chalupnik. Yes, Cooper? If you have any problems like this again, feel free to let us know. We'll get your mail if you send it to the Bureau. I'm sure Mr. Willem knows the address. Sure. 
Have a safe trip. Pavel looks like she was holding herself back all this time, not to yell. Orange, mister, I told you to get rid of Yuri. Ugh, Pavla, look. What is it, foolish Yuri? Here. So you finally decided to give my gloves back. I bought myself better ones. You can take your witchy gloves. They're not itchy. You're itchy. <laughs> Stop the car, Cooper. We're leaving. Cooper starts the car again as we exchange waves with the hotel folk. Looks like we've gained a few friends on the way, Miss Silva. Hmm. Yuri gives me his paper bag. Silva, taste is described the taste immediately. So I was right about him not being able to eat. Which supernatural being are we going to deal with this time? A ghost, I presume. A ghost known as the Murdered Nun. A, a murdered nun? What about it? N nothing. It just sounded too creepy. The nun part or the murdered part? I bet it's the nun part. Of course it's the murdered part. Why would I be scared of a nun? There's plenty of reasons to be scared of nuns, TBH. But they wear black, and you'll get scolded big time if you do something naughty. That doesn't mean that they're scary. Cooper smiles to himself and the car starts moving. Now that I think about it, we can buy some records from Prague and visit Mr. Vodnik again. Will you buy me a new set of clothes if we visit here again? Maybe. If we are able to purchase records. Oh wait, Silva. We can steal the church's pipe organ to bring it to Anastasia too. She mentioned she plays the violin. She might be interested in playing an organ. Cooper gasped to himself possibly considering what kind of sin it would be to steal a church organ itself. If it is reasonable size, why not? Very laughs. Ending number one. Good and Excellent. Miss Karat? Are you there? Hey. Is this phone working, Cooper? It is supposed to work, Miss Silva- Miss Carrat. Laura, it's so nice to hear from you, sweetheart. I'll report everything that happened, Miss Carrat, though I don't know why you want me to call you. I could have sent you a telegram on the matter. We should use the latest tech possible. It's pot it's important to adapt to the times, isn't it? If you say so. I was on the pill summit, Skoda, to take care of the Vodnik. Firstly, I should report that Skoda died. Skoda, okay, I'll get his documents. Did she, like, hear the... Is the reason why she heard about Skoda before because they'd been... There'd been a manhunt for Laura. So she got the information quickly that way. But since now, they took care of the murderer and they found out that it was Miss Blanca, they didn't need to contact Miss Carat. Should I continue speaking, Miss Carrat? Yes, surely, dear. The worker of the hotel killed him. I'll be the. It'll be best of you to assign another detective here, Miss Carrat. I don't think there's a need to assign one particularly to Czechoslovakia. Every representative in Germany will take care of it. Besides, you already dealt with the Vodnik now, haven't you? Yes, I have. Just like I expected from you, my dearest Laura. Skoda stated it, uh, that his cousin was working at the hotel. Was he the culprit? Uh, no, it isn't a family drama. The maid of the hotel killed him because she wanted to get rid of someone who was conducting a research on Vodnik. She was the one who drowned the Vodnik, too. She didn't want us to know that. What a cold-blooded murderer. She tried her best to make me believe that it was the Vodnik who killed Skoda. But you didn't get deceived by her, as expected from my Laura. Wow. Parat comes off as much nicer in this, huh? I talked with the Vodnik, too. It went smoothly. I presume he didn't show any hostile behavior against you? He didn't. He can record him as a harmless beast. Sure. Done. Do you know the reason why he hasn't paid his debt? He said the wish grantor asked for a child ghost. I thought his daughter was a ghost, too. The wish grantor didn't want his daughter, according to his account. That makes sense. Since no child ghost came to visit his shop, he hasn't paid his debt yet. Well, that's reasonable. I'll let him know about this. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else left to report? What are you thinking, Laura? Oh, nothing in particular, Miss Cara. You can share it with me. Skoda talked about you before his death. He said that he didn't trust you. Said 
said he found evidence against you. Also, he stated that there was something suspicious about your documents. Hmm. Did you check his journal? Not thoroughly. I see. You had said that you have connections with the wish granter, right, Miss Claret? I do. Is that the reason why you're currently the boss of this bureau? Honey, if I made a wish only about being the boss of a supernatural cases bureau, it'd be very stupid of me, wouldn't it? I also thought that you might have talked to Vodnik into killing Skoda. Oh my. You're thinking too deviously of me, dear Laura. If I wanted to kill Skoda, I would break his door and face him instead of plotting those plans. This sounds much more convincing now that we know that the maid is the killer. But I didn't know that Skoda planned against me. I presume he was bluff bluffing to get some word out of you, because I came here with hard work and effort of many years. Or you're the one who's lying. Are you forgetting what I have done for you? Will you answer my question? I'm not forgetting it. Before you blame me, remember that no one else would help you pay the debt you have. Don't ever forget that we are both related with the Wish Granter. We're in the same boat. You're almost as guilty as me. I'm not working with him. I'm only paying my debt. And I'm the one who's helping you pay your debt. Nothing more, nothing less. You didn't mention this to anyone else, yes? I didn't. Good. You won't either. Don't forget that I'm the one you can trust in this bureau. Of course. I assume you're only doubting the way I do my business because you're stressed. And you only just lost a co-worker. Don't come to me with baseless accusations like this. If you happen to find evidence against me, visit me at the bureau. We'll do the talking then. Do you mean that you're into fisher business? Of course not. Do you have anything else you want to say? No, I'm done with my report. Say, Laura. Yes. Which one do you like the most? Crimson or raven black? What is a crimson? A darker red, honey. Crimson, then. Those? Thought so. You remind me of red. I also thought this was interesting because she's wearing black and she's wearing red. Is this a hint that they actually like each other or what? I wish you good luck with your next mission, Laura. I appreciate the kind wishes, Miss Carat. I hang up the phone. Okay. So, we got the true ending, which I'm pleased about. Um, it was much nicer. I'm super glad that Laura didn't have to kill the Vodnik or his daughter. Because the first time around, that put a bad taste in my mouth. And Laura's panicky personality isn't really ideal for an investigator, but it's certainly better than Cooper. So there's that at least. Anyway, thanks a ton to the creators of this game. This was fun. I believe that chapter 2 is actually about to come out um, within the next few months, at the very least. Maybe even sooner. And I guess we're gonna see more of these three in the future. Thanks for watching. Ta-ta for now.